Have you ever wondered how to do raw edge applique? Well, stay tuned. Hi y'all, this is Melissa at Fork Mountain Quilting. And today we're going to learn about raw edge applique. So let's get started on what you need to do this project. First off, you'll need a pattern, and I'm using Rasbecca's Birds. Um, this is an awesome mug rug, or you could use this in any kind of applique process, quilt, table runners, anything like that. So Rasbecca Birds is what we're gonna do. Um, and what we're going to also need is you need a good pair of sharp scissors. I like to use the Karen K. Buckley scissors because they have a nice raw, um, sharp edge. You also need some Steam Seam Light too. That's my choice. Um, there are lots of other different interfacings out there, um, fusible interfacings out there. Um, so just use whatever is your favorite. I like this one and I'll explain to you why I do like that one. Um, you also need a few other tools like um, you'll need a fusible mat. Um, I like to use this to help prevent my um, wool mats getting um, sticky from the residue left over from the steam seam and also uh, keeps your irons um, safe too so they don't get all sticky and gummed up as well. So let's get started with the process. All right so the first step you need to do of course with any project is make sure you read through the pattern. It's really important when you're doing an applique process you need to find out if the maker reversed their um, image for you because that's really important you need your image reversed on most applications so make sure you read through your pattern in this case she did reverse her images so the next step we're going to do is we're going to take the images and we need to trace this onto our steam seam or your um, fusible um, interfacing whichever one you choose to use i like to use this awesome light table look at this so what's really great about this is it allows me to put my project down here so that I can trace onto my um, interfacing. So um, Steam Seam 2, just to kind of give you an idea of how it works, it's got two different sides. It's got one side that is got a grid on it and the other side is plain. To be honest, you can draw on either side that you want to. It doesn't really matter. Um, a lot of times I like to do a check on it to see which side is going to come apart the easiest, and then I go from there. Um, I just usually always trace on the grid side. So let's just do that. All right, so I'm just going to do one part for you to show you how this works. So you take your your um, drawings, you put it on the light table, or it works on the table too, but I, trust me, this makes it so much easier. And then you just place your, um, your interfacing over top of it. And I like to conserve as much as I possibly can. So all I'm going to do is I use a pencil and I'm just going to trace around the particular project that I'm doing. Um, now I've already done all of these for you and traced them out, but I just wanted to show the process. So you would just take your time to go around and to save as much of the interfacing as possible. All right, the next step I would do is I would go and I'm gonna cut this out. So let's go over to um, where the fabric's at and let's go cut this out. So now that I've got my pattern traced, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. Now you don't wanna cut it out exactly because you wanna cut it out exactly after you get it onto your fabric. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of raw cut around it. And then what I'm gonna do is um, we're gonna peel off the back side of it. And what you wanna make sure is, is that your interfacing is still attached to um, the place that you drawn. So let's get this apart and show you what I mean. All right, if you can zoom in here, you can see this is a side with my traced on it. And then here's my interfacing. So we wanna make sure that interfacing is there. So we wanna keep it on this side. So we're gonna peel off the part that's not drawn on and keep the part that is drawn on. All right. The next step is you're gonna take it and you're gonna put it on your fabric. Now what I really like about Steam a Seam too is that it's sticky. So what that does for us is it allows us to position it on here. You can finger press it. Um, you can put a little bit of steam on it if you want to, um, but it's gonna stay pretty good on this fabric now. Um, so the next step after I attach my Steam a Seam onto my fabric is I'm going to cut out around the edges of it. So let's do that. 
The next step we're going to do is we're going to cut out around the shape um, after it's put on the fabric. I did press it a little bit with an iron and it's really important that you let it cool before you pull off that transfer paper on top because you don't want the gumminess to not adhere to your fabric. So we're going to cut around here. All right. And then I got that cut out. We're just going to pull it um, the top part off here and it takes a little bit and you know um, you can see we'll get real close up you can see how it's got that little webbing on there so we know that the webbing has stuck to the fabric also if you notice it's sticky so that's what I love about steam seam too because when you are putting this on your fabric you don't have to worry about it blowing away when you walk over to the iron um, so just to save time, I went ahead and cut out my whole um, project here and I got it ready to put together. Um, for this particular um, project, we had to do a background and I went ahead and did a little bit of free motion quilting on that. So I went ahead and got my square ready as the instructions told me to and I did a little bit of free motion quilting on it so that we would have it ready to go. All right, so then the next thing we want to do is I'll turn this so you can see here. What's really great about steam seam too, like I already said, is that you can just kind of position these things down and it's got just a little bit of stickiness to it so that it will stay down. So I'm going to put my whole project on here. Put the eyeballs up there. We got my feet. I think one of them crosses over the other. I like that one to cross over that one. So I'm going to kind of wait as I put it down. I've got a feather there. And we got the top notch here. Put that down. All right, I'm going to play with these for a few minutes and then we'll come back. Alright, so I rearranged mine. Here's what I'm shooting for. And then my ver uh, version of it is um, just like this. So it's really important for this particular pattern in order to make it look like you want it to is pay attention to some of the elements. You know, some of them need to be tucked in. Some of them need to be on the outside. So like, you know, I got one leg crossed over the other um, and so forth. So um, I'm ready to go now. So the next step that we have to do is we need to take this to the steam iron and we're going to steam this down um, nice so that it will adhere to my background fabric and I can raw edge applique it. I'm going to sew it with a blanket stitch. Now we're going to iron. We're going to steam it down. Steam is steam too. It does require a little bit of steam. So you need a steam iron in order to do that. I guess it helps to plug it up. Okay, any time that you're using any kind of fusible um, interfacing, it's really important that you use some kind of protectant between your iron and what you're fusing because you could have just a little bit of the stickiness um, off to the side and you don't want to gum up anything. So I like to use the silicone um, Applifuse mat. And what's really great about this is that it's transparent. So I can just lay it right over top of what I need to fuse and I can actually see where everything's at. And then I'm going to take my steam iron and I'm going to um, steam right over top of it. Look at that steam. All right, Lola is all steamed down. So now we're ready to do the raw edge applique process. Let's head to the sewing machine. All right, so now we're at the sewing machine and we're gonna start the applique process. Um, so this project's already fun, but I like to add a little bit more fun to it by using variegated thread. So I've got two different threads here. I got Orfeel, which is cross wound onto the spool. And then I have the Madeira, which is um, stacked onto the spool. So what does that mean to you? That means that if you're gonna use a cross wound thread, you would need to put it onto your machine like this so that it comes off um, the right way. 
and this helps with tension so that's the reason why you want to always do this um, being that this one is stack wound I need to use this upper bar here because it needs to come off of the spool a different way so I'm going to thread this up real quick all right a couple things I want to explain to you that I like to do when I do a blanket stitch when I do my applique um, the first thing I like to have is an open toe foot um, and that way I can see what I'm doing the other thing is you need to figure out where is your blanket stitch on your machine and in my case I've already got mine set up to have um, the blanket stitch now if you look on here on the screen I can make my blanket stitch as small or as big as I need to make it the thing that you need to think about with the blanket stitch is um, how big is your project this one's kind of small my pieces are small so I want to have a smaller stitch when I'm doing my blanket stitch another thing that I like to do which really is very helpful is I put my needle all the way over to the right hand side of my foot and if you will zoom in here you'll see what I'm talking about and what makes this so easy or so much so helpful is as I'm doing my blanket stitch if you notice here how I line this all the way over um, I can line my foot up with the edge of what I'm doing my blanket stitch on and in that way it always keeps it nice and um, straight on my project so let's get going with my blanket stitch here So if you notice my needle is all the way over and I can put my rest my foot up against the edge of what I'm actually blanket stitching so let's go around this right here okay all right when I get to the end of it I'm going to leave my needle in and then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to go up the other side of this um, I actually kind of adjusted my um, stitch width here just so that it would become a little bit smaller since I'm in a smaller piece right here you finish putting your blanket stitch or your straight stitch all on this whole entire project um, then we're going to go over to the table and I'll show you the next step are you ready to go now that I've applied the blanket stitch to the all the pieces on here um, one thing that you're going to do is you're going to clean them up so basically you're just going to take a pair of scissors and trim up all your um, strings and stuff but let's look at some of the finished projects here is Bliss, um, also with Rasbecca's patterns. And so if you notice, I did a blanket stitch around all of the different um, elements of this project. Um, also, I added a couple of different touches here. The string that goes off of the balloon, I did that as well. And on this one here, this is Frederick. Um, Frederick, I did a couple of other things. I, I did a straight stitch um, around his eye and again, it doesn't have to be perfect as you can see it does it looks cool because it's got those elements in there um, but I also did a little zigzag stitch to do um, his eyelashes which I think is really cool so um, the blanket stitch you know around here with the different colors um, I just think it really makes this project a lot of fun and it sets it off all right we're almost finished with this project these are mug rugs and you really don't want your stitches to be shown on the back so there is a couple of things that you need to do to finish off your project here um, so what all I did is I added a nice pretty piece of material on the back and I went ahead and put my little um, hanging triangles in the corners here before I bound it so that way if you wanted to hang these up instead of using these as mug rugs um, and then you're going to bind it and you got a finished project so these are excellent little fun things here that we have at the store this is called Rasbecca birds and you know what every one of them has a story I didn't want to tell you the story because I want you to see what the stories are all about so come into our store and check out all of these great um, patterns that we have here and all the funny stories that go with them so I hope you enjoyed our applique process today here at Fort Mountain Quilting we believe in doing what makes our hearts happy 
so long for now and I will see you later.